Hey y'all, this is the Mr. Southern Soul Radio Show with your boy, DJ Smooth D. Come on D, take it away. Hey family, what's up? It's your boy DJ Smooth D. This is the Mr. Southern Soul Radio Show, the podcast. Well family, it's time, it's back. I am so excited. I appreciate you listening, loving, and enjoying me over the last few years. Well, anyway, this is a place, a safe place, for you to enjoy Southern Soul Blues and R&B 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Um, I'm recreating a podcast. This is what started me on my journey over 11, maybe 12 years ago. Um, I started back in 2009 with this particular podcast it is a wonderful and amazing opportunity for people to learn to enjoy and just be moved by the music um my resume is a simple yet um important journey for me um of course i've been in the business um since 2009 some of you fortunately have heard of me um this was a project that I had always had always did um, just left it on the stove for a little while Um, fortunately I have an opportunity to return uh, to the podcast ranks Um, of course I do other have I do have other podcasts that we will be resurrecting over the next few weeks months um, and days Um, but like I said, I am DJ Smooth D. Uh, been in the business since 2009. I am the co-owner, program director, and of course, all-around fan of this particular genre of music, which we call Southern Soul. Well, anyway, um, of course, also I have, uh, as I said, I am the owner, co-owner of WUNK Inc., which is a group of stations. Uh, that also supports Southern Soul Blues, R&B, Gospel, and Hip Hop. So if you ever go searching for music, shameless plug, shameless plug, WUNK Southern Soul Radio, uh, WUNK Gospel Inspirations, WUNK, um, what's my other one? Oh, Juke Joint Radio, which is a very brand new station, uh, started back in 2023. And then, of course, we also have WUNK Hip Hop Radio as well. We're going to bring that one back if we can. But anyway, on to the podcast. Uh, this is a uh, podcast of the story of Southern Soul uh, from many different perspectives. Of course, my own, uh, the opinions and the views of this particular podcast is only of me. Uh, it is not a right or wrong answer. It's just something that I have seen over the formative years, um, over the last almost, well, you might as well say 2009 up until now, over the last 15 years, uh, I have literally seen the genre grow by leaps and bounds. And I've also seen the genre, uh, really go in my opinion to a, uh, almost a place where it might be it might be dead, it may not, but there again, it's just something that I, that my own opinion is, um, so a lot of people will hear this and say, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, that's fine, um, I'm, I'm okay with that, I'm, I'm fine with that, I've been one of the few people, uh, staunch advocates of Southern Soul and how the music works, and things that are being done that should be done, and things that are not being done that should be done, but anyway, on to, uh, some, other things um of course we will be uh, a little bit of pop culture a little bit of sports a little bit of this a little bit of that along with the major topic of southern soul southern soul uh and this is kind of a loose definition of what the music was created southern soul has many different names it's called soul blues it's called uh r&b soul um it is now being dubbed the next soul hip-hop or the next southern soul hip-hop which now they've added uh, a lot of rap music and hip-hop to it or rap verses i shall say 
Uh, but the definition of it to me is a blues influenced track that is held up with uh, R&B and gospel grooves. Um, the gospel grooves was something that I just found out myself from one of the listening to an interview with one of the major artists of Southern Soul, young band by the name of J. Juan. Um, anyway, you'll hear me talk about different artists. Um, people like J. Juan, of course, uh, Omar Cunningham, Vic Allen, a uh, young lady named by the name of Karen Wolf. Um, many different artists we will discuss on this podcast. If you have um, questions, concerns, um, if you want to, you know, literally have a little bit of a dialogue, please, please, please get at me um, and uh, we'll talk about it. Um, I am on Facebook. It is DJ Smooth D, um, D Brown. That's what I use uh, on Facebook. Um, also, I am Mr. Southern Soul on Instagram, and uh, I am Uncle D on TikTok. Yes, I am on TikTok as well. Uh, so I hope you join me on one of those platforms. Of course, WUNK Southern Soul Radio is also a like page on Facebook. So join the dialogue, join the debate. Uh, I would love to uh, hear your thoughts, hear your views on this music. But anyway, uh, back to the music itself. As I said, it is a, uh, I always said it was loosely based on blues, R&B, and We've added the gospel riffs recently because if you listen to a lot of the gospel music from Mississippi, Texas, and Louisiana, um, you will hear Southern Soul. A good example of that is the classic from uh, Mr. Marvin C's Mr. Candy Liquor when he did Clean Up What I Messed Up. It was a uh, song originally done by the Canton Spirituals. Um, and if you hear them both, they sound exactly the same. Um, in terms of the music itself but anyway um there again thank you i appreciate you guys for joining me uh on this uh this little journey that we are returning to um with southern soul and blues but uh anyway um the southern soul and blues it was erected in my opinion back in the um, I'm going to say the early 90s, uh, 92 to probably 95. I have seen a lot of um, a lot of album covers and a lot of the artists that I enjoy started back then. Um, people like Kenny Wayne and people like O.B. Buchanan and people like... Uh, which she really didn't start then, but uh, you add in there people like um, Denise LaSalle and Shirley Brown and uh, all of those artists were in Southern Soul uh, at the time. And that's also another debate that's still being had to this day. That what do, what do we define those artists as? Uh, you've got artists that are being drug in. Uh, Denise LaSalle is a good example. Uh, Shirley Brown. Um, you're talking about Betty Wright. Um, you're talking about B.B. King and Lil Milton and Lattimore, Theodis Ely. Uh, artists like those that you really can't say where they are. They are played with Southern Soul, yes, but you can't really say where they are as artists because uh, this is a, a this is really something that I really enjoy talking about. Good example, uh, Tyrone Davis. He started out singing, from what I've read and what I understand, he started out singing jazz music. Um, Tyrone Davis did. It was jazz. He did soul music. He did gospel. He did uh, pop music. And they. he did not literally return to the soul era until the end of his career. Uh, Johnny Taylor another artist he came out as a soul artist um he did the likes of disco lady and um uh rome wasn't built in a day um he did all those songs but we didn't see him until the end of his career with 
Southern Soul or what we call Blues Soul or Soul Blues. Uh, another artist that was like that, Mr. Uh, Bobby Bland. Bobby Bland did not head into the soul, soul genre until the end of his career. Uh, one of the greats of music. Uh, God rest his soul. Um, he, he was just a great artist overall. I enjoy talking about the fact that these artists are, their music is still going. Um, I mean, you hear B.B. Uh, King all the time. We didn't know also where to put him. Uh, discussing artists and how their music evolved. B.B. Um, King, his music uh, his music was so soulful that we didn't call it blues. And he was a blues guitarist. He's a blues man. Um, he was on Soul Train. So to say that, and I and I, I kind of vibe off of this as well. To say that BB King, to I'm sorry, to say that Denise LaSalle was a Southern soul artist is out of the question. Because she tapped the people gave her the title of the Queen of the Blues. Lil Milton Campbell was a blues man, another blues man. But his music was played on Southern Soul Radio. Which Southern Soul Radio includes different stations around the country. Um, now it's titled Grown Folks Music. Um, because of the sheer fact that a lot of the music is for grown folks. Southern Soul is one of to me to me he to me excuse me uh southern soul is i always thought the music was dirty it's not dirty dirty it is not explicit it's more provocative um you hear uh cheating in the next room um by zz hill you hear stand up in it by theodos ely you hear, I love to eat everything that starts with a P by Lee Shot Williams. These are some of the musics that we're going to get into, we're going to dive into over this podcast. Um, also, I'm a very fortunate person that I've met some of these artists. Uh, so I am definitely involved in it. Um, you know, it is what it is. But the big thing is, is this music is going to have longevity if it is handled right and we are uh very fortunate a lot of the the artists that sung the hits and that are still singing the hits are still here um another artist that we we rarely we try to lump him in southern soul but we can't is mr bobby rush uh in my opinion one of the greatest entertainers he is headed and I believe he's going to have his 90th birthday this year. Uh, I, I'm fortunate I've met him personally, a wonderful man, very humble man, been all over the world. He is second to none. In my opinion, he is second only to, um, as far as traveling, I believe he's second only to B.B. King as far as traveling with the blues. Uh, he is a Grammy-nominated, Grammy Award winner. Uh, just released a new album called All, I believe it's called All Is Love or All Is For Love, something like that. But anyway, he has just released a new album. We've got the, the music. It will be played over on the on the station. Uh, by the way, you'll only hear excerpts of the music on this particular podcast simply because of the fact that the podcast itself is pretty tough when it comes to music. Um, so... I encourage you that if you hear an artist or you hear an artist's name, go to your favorite platform and listen. Go to your favorite distribution store and grab their music. Uh, add it to your collection. I know a lot of you have it already. If you don't have it, go get it. Southern Soul is a growing music. Mind you, um, uh, a perfect example of also the music growing and expanding is King George. Um his music took off, in my opinion, um, on TikTok. It really did with the lights of Keep On Rolling and uh, this new single that he has out now, um, A Little Weight. Um, 
just to name a few artists there again this is not a um this is not a music playlist not by any means um if you want that there again i have platforms that have that music on there and have other types of music on there as well but spotify uh apple music um if your favorite is uh youtube uh just go on there are some great djs um and some great uh artists that curate music over there but i just due to copyrights and some of the platforms that I'm going to be putting this podcast on, I just can't do music on there. But I will try to do sip, snippets and excerpts uh, to allow you to hear some of the music and what it does. So anyway, um, Southern Soul in probably, I got my first taste of Southern Soul back in 99. Um, I was a... I was fortunate to have, uh, I was, had a residency in, I was a resident of Mobile, Alabama uh, for a number of years. And Mobile, Alabama, in my opinion, is one of, if not the hotbed for Southern Soul and Soul Blues. Um, I took in my first blues show. Uh, if you know it or not, that is one of the greatest things about Southern Soul. Southern Soul, um, to me, is a family music. You can pretty much take your kids now. It used to be you couldn't, uh, but now you can. You can take your kids. You can take the dog. You can take uh, anybody you want to take to a blue show, uh, literally. Um, and I don't think people believe that, but you can. You can now. But I was uh, introduced to the music uh, by way of a, um, a, a friend of mine. Uh, she was, I'm not going to call her a friend. She was an ex-girlfriend. Um, and she introduced me to the likes of TK Soul and um, a man by the name of Marvin Seas. She was a very big fan of those two artists uh, at the time. And I used to listen to a radio station out of Mobile. Um, shouts out to Nikki DeMarks, uh, WDLT, which it is still running. That's what I. That's why I say I encourage you guys to go out and partake in this music. Um, if you've never heard it, um, it is out there. I mean, it is so far out there. It is being heard in places uh, like uh, Japan and Guatemala. And places like England and France. And it is no longer local. It's global. It used to be a regional type music. It used to be just in the south. That's where the. I believe that's where they coined the phrase from Southern Soul. Um, because it was only in places like Texas and Louisiana and Mississippi and Florida. Georgia, Alabama, um, the Carolinas, Virginia. Uh, that's kind of where it stopped at. It's kind of where it was you know at that particular point uh for a lot of people but anyway um it's really something that you you it it becomes infectious and i used to travel to mobile a few times a month and as i was driving down i would hear wdlt 104.1 which uh Mobile at that time was literally, if you wanted to do a Southern Soul career, you went to Mobile. You, it was like the Atlanta of rap music. Um, you had the likes of Hot Wire Show and Band. You had um, Solomon Thompson and um, and uh, um, uh, Ron G. Um, you had the likes of. Uh, let me think about this because this is a hard one. But in, anyway, um, at that time, I went to this particular blues show. It's called Spring Fling. It still exists to this day. Spring Fling is one of the longest running concerts, blues concerts in the country. Uh, it's been running for decades. Um, but anyway, it, 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 I went to Spring Fling 99. And at Spring Fling 99, 
um, it was a community. Uh, the blues shows were kind of like down there were kind of like you were seeing old family and old friends and it was like a family reunion. But anyway, um, the blues show to me was it immediately became something that I really wanted to go to listening to the music down in uh, on my way down to Mobile uh, to see a girlfriend. And um, I was very fortunate, which I I, every time I talk about it, I just smile. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to attend a show that had three of the biggest Southern soul icons, soul blues icons that you could ever see. It's it'll never happen again. Uh, I saw Marvin Cease, I saw Tyrone Davis, and I saw Mel Waiters all in one show. Um, I was very fortunate. We stayed all day. We got there, must have been about noon, between noon and 2 o'clock, and we left. It was about 10 o'clock at night. But this was this was the height of their careers uh, at that time. This was Tyrone Davis with um, – change my mind and turn back the hands of time and uh kiss you where i miss you and all of these great songs and it was when marvin cease was doing uh i believe at that time it was when he was doing whew, that was far back uh candy liquor and ghetto man and hotel lover and all of his hits uh was going on then not to mention you had male waiters Mel Waiters, in my opinion, was probably at that time, he was the number one uh, soul blues artist in the world. Uh, he had Hole in the Wall, Ice Chess, uh, um, Got My Whiskey. He had all these songs that were just great songs. And he did them. They did them. Um, at that time, I think that was a $22 ticket, I think, if I remember right. It was cheap. Mind you, that was 1999, um, and that's where I got my start. Um, I tried a few times to sing. Um, at that time, I tried to sing with Kenny Wayne. I tried to sing with Sir Charles Jones. I've been in the business in and out trying for a number of years, um, and I feel like more than ever, I'm one of those folks that uh, it's it's not just a, a it's not just a, a hobby. It's a passion for me. Um, but anyway, when you went to those shows, like I said, it was a family reunion. It was a kinship. It was a community. Um, plenty to eat and drink. You enjoyed yourself. Um, and, and it hasn't changed, mind you. But anyway, Southern Soul is something to me, I tell people all the time, it is something of a, a marvel. Uh, because it grew, it's a grassroots music. It's grassroots. It's a genre that if you, for a long time, if you didn't live in the South, you didn't know what it was. It was, you know, the first thing up North, people people say, oh, that's the blues. No, it's not the blues at all. It is soul blues because it has the blues E in it. A lot of it is blues E. But anyway, like I said, we'll we'll get more into it. But like I said, the the music itself guys is something you have to go and listen to now if you're not a person of classic soul if you are not an r&b person that's okay because southern soul has something for everyone um and it doesn't have a mind you here's the thing about southern soul and blues that is the most important it doesn't have a color attached to it Meaning, oh, only black people listen to it, or only brown people listen to it, or only white people listen to it. It doesn't have that. In my opinion, there again, all of this is my opinion. In my opinion, it is one of the most colorless musics. Um, because of the fact that you can say, you have to remember that all music starts with blues. Every kind of music starts with blues. There's an argument that has been going on since the beginning of time. But if you go back and listen, for example, 
some of the best rock bands always point back to B.B. King. They always point back to the likes of uh, Johnny Taylor. They all point back to the likes of Lil Milton and Tyrone Davis. They really point back to B.B. King. Uh, the Rolling Stones love B.B. King. Artists from Europe love B.B. King. They idolize B.B. King. Um, so, but there again, it's a, if you, if you listen to, like I said, I'll give you a song that you can go listen to and you'll hear both. It's the, the, the song is titled the same by both artists. Clean up what I messed up. Marvin C's Canton spirituals. They both are the same. Um, because all of it is rooted in the blues. You have that meshing of the sounds um and this is I, I get into this it's i get into this discussion regularly that people want to believe that gospel came before the blues no the blues came first the blues was something that that people of color sung after they left the fields after they left work that's why you you hear the term juke joint because they would leave the fields, they would leave work, and they would go down to the local juke joint. It was just a little place. It wasn't anything big. Some of them I've seen are as small as bathrooms. But you always had a jukebox. You always had a bar. You always had a few loose tables. And you had drinks. Um, and that's where the music came out of. Um. Uh, a lot of the blues artists, that's why they call them blues men and blues women, because they sung that music. Uh, Robert Johnson and Sonny Boy, uh, Sonny Boy Robinson, B.B. King and Lil Milton Campbell, Theotis Ely, um, uh, Johnny Shine, John Lee Hooker, Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf. Um, that's where you get that bottom from of the music. Um, then you add, they added R&B to the music, like it was a pot of gumbo or something. Um, but they took the likes of uh, the Muscle Shoals rhythm section, and they took the likes of Wilson Pickett and Otis Redding, and and yeah, I just can't, I can't get Johnny Taylor off my mind. Um, and I'll tell you the story of Johnny Taylor later. We'll do an entire podcast on Johnny Taylor, um, but the likes of these folks were sprinkling music in and as you sprinkle it in you get a it's it's like it's it's like a pot of soup it's like a gumbo it's like a melting pot and you get all this music together and you figure out what flies out of it which is not a bad thing um not a bad thing at all a lot of people think that uh southern soul is something that's wrong it's not right but if you listen to it closely that bass and that bottom comes right out of the church. Um, the guitar riffs, you get a lot of the guitar riffs from blues. And then you add a little R&B in there and there comes Southern Soul. There comes Soul Blues. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a melting pot. And I want you to join me um, as we take this ride over the next few weeks and months talking about different topics and different aspects of the music. Uh, I want to try to do a show of cover songs. Now, mind you, here's the thing about a cover song that I like to tell people. Make the cover song better than the original. Make it better. Uh, don't make it worse. Make it better. Um, there have been a lot of cover songs that have just been awful, and then there have been some cover songs that were great. But this particular blues show and this journey that I took was literally a journey of it was just insightful it that particular my first ride to mobile when i first was traveling to go see her i heard this music and i said what is this and i started listening uh some of the first songs that i heard was hole in the wall and um uh, jesse graham sing singing love talk and Jesse Graham singing Mr. Mailman and uh, Solomon Burke doing It's Your Birthday and uh, K. 
Karen Wolf singing uh, Man Enough. And, and all these songs started to make me wonder, well, where did this music come from? And it was born out of the the cotton fields and the juke joints of Mississippi. And like I said, there's still a debate of where it came from. Uh, Alabama is one of the big states for Southern Soul, for the blues. Uh, you had, uh, he was not born here. He was not raised here. But you've got one of the biggest producers here, uh, Sir Charles Jones. You've got artists here. you got an artist here that started out. He did a classic song, which is still being played to this day, called Hell in the House. Uh, Hell at the House, Omar Cunningham. And now he is, an, he is a uh, voting member of the Grammys. Um, and then you've got, like I said, down in Mobile, you've got Hot Wire Show and Band here in Montgomery, uh, which is the my base um you've got the likes of angel faye russell and um uh finally regina regina she's a brand new artist that i really want you to go listen to she's out of let me say this right or she'll shoot me um i believe tallacee or tuskegee but anyway great artists we've got artists here in, in uh, montgomery um uh, Lil Kim Stewart, uh, Miss Bootleg Baby, Miss uh, Southern Soul Woman. She was a she's a great example of an evolution of music as well. She started out on one of the first labels, which the label still exists to this day, called Mardi Gras Records. Um, amazing artist. She's a great producer, writer. Uh, she is an instrumentalist. She's just a great uh, a great woman. She's a great artist, but. The state of Alabama has spawned a lot of artists. Uh, if you go to Georgia, uh, Georgia has the likes of uh, Mr. Smoke, and that that his that his 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 band name, uh, his artist name, but he's out of Columbus, Georgia. Uh, if you go to Mississippi, Mississippi has just got artists just falling out of the, out of the pockets. Uh, Vic Allen and Jay Wan and uh, a young lady by the name of Jennifer Watts. Um, the list goes on and on and on, but. The music started out, I think it started out in, basically, it started out in Mississippi, and it just went everywhere. Nowadays, with the invention of the internet, thank God for the internet, with the invention of the internet, it allowed the music to broaden even more. And it wasn't just Mobile, Alabama. But once I started on my journey, I noticed a lot of the music itself was very infectious. You could hear the song and the song would be stuck in your head for the next three or four weeks. Um, and the artists were, they were grassroots. Okay, I'm going to hop in the car. I got a concert to go do. I'll go drive myself. Uh, the artist would release a song. It would be no more than 30 minutes out of the studio and it would be in my inbox. Um, but as I tell people, the music itself is still is still that pot is still on the stove now it is still people are still adding spice to the pot and so the key to it is is that it's a spicy music it's a provocative music but it's a good music it's a fun music it's a music that you can play at grandma's birthday party and the kids are there and you hear hole in the wall and you hear uh, last two dollars and you hear disco lady and all of it still soul but it's got that blues in there and so I say to everybody saying it like this this particular journey that we're going to go on is a lot of different topics I'm not necessarily going to stick to the music you know we may hear an episode about johnny taylor like i said i want to do that episode um we may hear an episode on the ladies of southern soul uh like i said you got karen wolf denise lasalle shirley brown lacy um young lady now miss uh miss brown sugar 
Miss Sassy, um, Toy Toy, uh, Miss Poochie. Uh, uh, and by the way, a lot of these artists, the ladies, you know, they have a lot of different names. Um, the Mystery Lady. There is an artist by the name of the Mystery Man. Um, like I said, you got um, Labrado. Yes, his name is Labrado. Um, very crisp. Um, J. Red the nephew. Um, the list go on. The list goes on and on of all the artists that are in uh, Soul Blues and Southern Soul. But as I got into this this music. I wanted to figure out a way to, I say it, and put myself in it, um, which I found myself, um, and we're going to roll up to 2009, uh, was, I had, was transitioning at the time, and I said, is there something that I can do that will give me an opportunity to be part of this, and I found it. Is the radio and podcast um, the radio for me was an opportunity for me to meet some of the artists and mingle and go to some of the concerts and just promote the music I never wanted a dime for what I did I never made any money for what I did and what I do um, if I made money I'd be broke um but I don't make money on this, but to be able to go and travel to different parts of the country and to see these artists do what their craft is, is a privilege. Um, it's an honor. And I really, 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 really enjoy the opportunity to be able to do that on a regular basis. Um, and that's where, when I left that blue show that night, I knew that I wanted to do something in Southern Soul because I love music. Um, if you don't hear me listen to music, one reason is I'm asleep. Most of the time I have some music either in my ear or in my, you know, I'm in the car or somewhere. But in 2000, well, we'll just say 99 to about 2005, I was a concert goer. Um, I went sometimes three times, four times a year. Um, I saw some of everybody. I've seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of the artists. Uh, rest in peace to Floyd Taylor. I saw him. Um, and many of the artists were just that. I saw um, I saw Mel Waiters on the regular. I mean, every, pretty much every concert I went to, I saw him. And the, the thing about concerts now versus then is that the we were a smaller community at that time um, we had smaller crowds now there some of the concerts are in the hundreds of thousands um, they are and it's the growth factor and it's because of the internet I got what I was looking for when I said oh the internet's here I got what I was looking for now, don't get me wrong. I love concerts. I can go on the regular, which I try to go on the regular. But the key to the whole situation is, is that when you go to those events, be ready to sit there because these concerts are very lengthy. I have been to concerts where it started at noon and we didn't leave till midnight. That's why I always encourage people when they go to a blues show, pack a blanket. You're going to be there a while, um, which is good because so many of the artists have so much music. They have so much that they want to do and want to say that, you know, that they're there. They're, they're going to be there. But um, now and nowadays, uh, back when we were going, when, when I was going regularly concerts, um, a lot of times the concerts were very informal. Um, you never got dressed up to go to these things unless you had, you know, you had another event that you were attending before the blue show. Uh, 
you never went after. Most of the time, these, uh, just picture it in the summer or in the spring, um, and it was comfortable, comfortable attire. Shorts, T-shirts, linen suits, dresses, um, things like that. You never, you never wore a suit unless it was an indoor event, which blue shows, by the way, blues concerts, blues shows, they are indoors and outdoors. Now, this time of year, which we're headed to the summer, they're going to be more and more outside. Um, but we were fortunate to go. Um, I've been to three states going to blue shows. Uh, I've been to Mississippi. I have been to Alabama, of course. And I've also been to Florida. Um, so I kind of know what's a good blue show and what's not a good blue show. But for the most part, Southern Soul, that's part of the the nostalgia and the the journey of Southern Soul is you want to attend a blues show. You want to attend one. Um, and we had this kind of like a, you know, people say you have a checklist. People say you have a, a list of things that you need on a blues show. And that was the truth. Um, things like, of course, you, you're going to want to eat. Okay. You had plenty to eat. You had plenty to drink. Now, mind you, uh, drinking was something that was, it was known. I mean, it, it happened. It People drank a lot. Um, uh, you know, you would have, like, for example, the ladies. I'll give you a good thing the ladies had all the time. Wipes and toilet paper. Um, because... Believe it or not, at the blue shows, you it was a porta potty. Um, you know, you had you know, unfortunately, I mean, women are resourceful. Uh, some of them would cop a squat. I mean, they really would. But for the most part, you had this thing about the blue shows that were just, you know, they were amazing. Um, I had an opportunity to meet um, uh, Johnny Taylor. His MC was, I forgot the gentleman's name. He's passed on, God rest his soul. But he also did the movies for Dolomite. Um, uh, so blue shows were, you know, are literally amazing i'll give you a little story a little story from from one that i you know post pre-covid that i went to um the we were out at it's a it's a little uh a little uh venue out on the other side of uh montgomery it's called Carnes park it is the Carnes Park uh, hosts most of the local blues shows here. Um, a young man by the name of uh, Roscoe Miller. He has been in the business longer than I've been in the business. He's been in the business, I think, since the, I think people say since the late, the early 70s. Um, he's owned countless radio stations uh, around the area. And he currently, right now, he is the um, owner of WKXN the big KD. But anyway, we were at Carnes Park one time. And uh there was a particular blues show. If if you know blues and if you know Southern Soul and you're an avid listener of it, recently we which I don't think it was recent, I think it's been a while. We have a young lady uh that hosts a lot of blues shows, Miss Mary. Miss Mary has gone viral a number of times for her what kind of clothes she wears. She's an older lady. But she's sporty. I mean, she's she's a to me she is a hoot, and I say that like you know she's really funny, but she's real. And she was on stage that particular day. We was out at Carnes Park. It was kind of hot, and people were, you know, drinking water, and you know they were eating, and people were drinking alcohol. And she made the remark. She said, 
and if if you if you know you know she said if you fall if you fall on the down she said if you fall on the ground don't fall asleep somebody going to push something in your mouth and the crowd was looking absolutely we went into hysterics but that's the the like i said it's very informal when you go to those shows uh mr miller used to have a young man which he is um he's a he's a great comedian jerry Jerry Jackson is funny to me. Um, he would, in between sets, he would tell jokes. Um, he was another one. We had, uh, of course, Nikki DeMarks. She does a, she hosts a lot of the events uh, down in the Mobile area. Um, Daryl Lee, which his name is Daryl Elliott, but his na- his stage name, which, you know, is Daryl E. Train or Daryl E., he is he's he's good too but you have this sense of family when you go there um you know you're going to buy your ticket of course but you know for the most part people are sharing alcohol uh there are some of that wacky tobacco that is there as well um but ladies and gentlemen i've gotten off the tangent but anyway as you can see southern soul is very country it's very informative it's informal it's very home-like. Um, it's, uh, I've, I've kind of coined a phrase myself. It's like a sweet potato pie. It's homemade. Southern Soul is a homemade music. If you listen to it, it sounds homemade. But like I said, it's infectious. It's, if you have soul blues and you don't have a drink in your hand, you ain't living right. Um, and that's another that could be a whole that could be a whole episode the drinks of southern soul it really could it could be a whole a whole episode some of the drink songs uh you had uh drinking again by obb counter you had let's get drunk by the same artist you had uh uh let me see ice chest uh got my whiskey uh, um um I forgot the other gentleman's name. There is a gentleman that has a song called Crown Royal. Um, so, I mean, it's it's nothing for you to be part of a family. Uh, that's why I tell a lot of people, don't be afraid to have a good time when you go. If you go to a little cabaret or if you go to a uh, a little small blues party, don't don't be afraid to have a good time. Don't expect to be all, you know, cockeyed and upbeat. Um, expect to have a good time. Don't get all, like like grown folks say, don't get all of this together and then not have a good time. You know, uh, a prerequisite of a blue show is an ice chest and a, and a fifth of whiskey. And your ice chest got all your beer in it and got all your food in it. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, the the infection of this music is something that people don't understand. A lot of people think it's country, uh, just like country music. There is music now born out of Southern Soul. There is a, which I call it a genre, some people don't call it a genre, called trail ride music. The trail ride is the big thing now. And that spawned out of a music out of Louisiana, which you may not know what it is, and you may know what it is. It's called Zydeco. It is, Zydeco is something that you just have to listen to. You have to be willing to listen to it and take it in. A lot of people don't like it from Louisiana. A lot of people tell you, I hate the music. Um, but back to the, the whole thing of Southern Soul, if you don't if you don't know the music and you say what is that like i said you're going to get a lot of different answers and the answers are going to be just different answers uh like i said it's some people call it grown folks music because at one time nobody listened to the music but grown folks nobody listened to the music but grown folks now 
a lot of people listen to it. Even the 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 twenty something group they listen to it. Um, some of the teenagers listen to it because the parents played it and the grandparents played it. Some people call it cleanup music. Like today, for example, today is a Saturday, a early Saturday morning. There is somebody in the country that has their house open, they're cleaning up, and they're playing Johnny Taylor right now. Mark my words. But I keep bringing this up to say this, that we're going to go on a journey. And this journey is going to be something that people, I believe, are going to enjoy. I want you to take the opportunity to follow. I'm not going to say subscribe. I'm going to say it like this. Join the family. Join the community of Southern Soul. Join the community of Soul Blues. You will you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. I promise you. You will not be disappointed. This community is something special. It is something amazing. It truly is. It is amazing. It is something people only can replicate. I won't say replicate. They can't replicate it. It's hard. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to play a couple of snippets. I'm going to play a couple of snippets of Southern Soul. And it's going to be some music over the remainder of the podcast that you're going to enjoy. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to add some music in, allow it to play, and then I'm going to come back. I'm still going to be on. The podcast is going to be still going, but I'm going to add some music in. So let's say it like this. I'm going to I'm going to play I'm going to snip it five of your favorite southern soul songs. My favorite, five of my favorite over the next few moments. Um these are songs that I cut my teeth on. Um that I was fortunate to have. Um very fortunate to have these songs in my life. Um I love them. Uh, And then I'm going to play as well. We're going to try to snip it this down. We're not going to make it real uh, real long. Uh, Some of the music that you would think is Southern Soul, but it's not. So I'll play that in a little bit. You you you'll hear it with the with the final. Uh, You'll hear some music down the road with that. Here's some of the songs that. We've been talking about it throughout the podcast, throughout the the episode. These are songs that there's a debate over, whether it's Southern Soul or not. We don't know. We can't say because of where the music genre-wise should lie. Um, there again, this is all opinion-based. A song that people think is Southern Soul that is not Southern Soul. Thrill is gone. B.B. King. It is not Southern Soul. Now here's a song that is. Stand Up In It by Theodos Ely. It is. Now he's a blues man. He is one of the greats of the blues in Mississippi. He even has a name. He, He even has a sign on the blues trail. Him and his brother Bo. Here's another song. The people say, oh, it's Southern Soul. It's Southern Soul. Struggling Lady by Lil Milton. He's a blues guy. That's blues. Okay, here's one everybody thinks that is Southern Soul. That's not. Marvin Cease, Candy Liquor. That's not Southern Soul nor blues. That is soul music. That is so much soul. B.B. King was soul, blue soul. Then, Like I told you, he ended up on Soul Train. Bobby Bland ended up on Soul Train. Denise LaSalle, she is a soul artist, 
she said she sung a lot of during her the middle of her career she sung a lot of blues oh yeah um quite a bit towards the remainder of her career southern soul all day long um it is what it is you can call it whatever you want to call it but um let's do something i want to give you guys something to kind of not only think about but here's some names that are going to kind of trigger you a little bit i guess i guess that's what you call it a trigger um more like i don't know um what i'm gonna do as part of my episode each week if we can i'm going to do shout out to tyrone davis and uh the, I believe he's on the American Blues Network. That's somewhere else you can listen to blues at as well. It's called the American Blues Network. Uh, Party Blues and Oldies. Um, some of the stations that play a lot of Southern Soul is, um, of course, WUNK Southern Soul Radio. We play Soul Blues and Southern Soul 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Shameless plug. Um, but uh, WDLT out of Mobile uh, is some of the stations that you can listen to. Um, like I said, Party Blues and Oldies, the ABN, American Blues Network. That there again, they're another station that had, they still have a chokehold on the on the blues. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to, I'm not fighting with with anyone. It's enough space for everybody. Um, I'm over in the corner. I'm one of, I think that I'm one of the best internet stations uh, over the decade. Uh, we've held our own. We've done the best we could um, as a station. But anyway, he puts out, I think, weekly. Uh, they, he calls his the Soul Blues Top 20 Countdown some of the most played songs of the week. And we're going to do that. We're, we're going to give you an opportunity to hear um, artist names that you may have never heard of. Um Artist names that you may have heard of, um, but it gives you an opportunity of foothold on some music that when the podcast ends, that you can go find, go get, go play. Um, and all these artists will be there in, I think every one of these artists are either in Apple Music, Amazon, Spotify, Tidal, somewhere where you can either buy it or stream it. I would prefer you to buy it because... There again, this is a money thing. Um, we we all got to make money. Um, and we're gonna we're kind of we're kind of gonna build up to the number one uh, number one song in the country right now. This is as of March the sixth, which we're we're probably gonna get a new one by the time I get this one out. Um, he has five songs that are on the rise right now. Uh, Miss Jeannie, Hurt No More, Sheila B, uh, uh, Keep Your Dog on a Short Lead. See, there's a, there's, you know, something to think about. Uh, Jay Red, Jay Red the Nephew, I dropped his name earlier, uh, should have been there. Uh, should have been there. Uh, Memphis Jackson, uh, shouts out to Memphis. Uh, Can't Live Without You. Uh, Nelson Curry, and Nelson Curry is one of the, he has been in the business, the music business, probably, I'm going to dare to say 25 years, 35 years. He's been in the music business since the early 90s, I think. If if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Uh, don't hold me against me. Um, it's called Put That Thing On Me. There again, a little provocative. Uh, this is Five on the Rise, so... These will be these th- these songs are five on the rise means that they're headed up the charts. Uh, they may not be on the top twenty right now, listed right now, but eventually they will be there. Um, and then they've got a a pick to click, which you know you want to hear this song, you want to click on this song uh, to either add it to your collection or add it to your ear collection. Uh, Chuck Strong doing "Rock That Man," which is "Rock That Man in the Boat." Um, the remix um, 
And then he also has a list of songs that are called new and active, meaning that they have been released. I think all of these have been released within the last in the last four to eight weeks. Um, Alman Garrett with Time Machine, great bassist. Uh, LJ Eccles, that is uh, Mr. Good Motor. Uh, so Tyree Neal. Liquor Talk, um, you read into that one. Uh, one of the, another one of the legends, living legends of Southern Soul, O.B. Buchanan with Tootsie. Uh, Stephanie Pickett with Thunder Steeler. She's also out of Montgomery. Uh, Pat Cooley, Cheat Ain't Nothing. Ricky White, one of the great producers of Southern Soul. Uh, Big Girls, M. Callie with Comeback. Solomon Thompson and Toya Jones, um, they are both Alabama homegrown uh, from Mobile, and Toya Jones is from Montgomery. She made it to, I think she was one of the finalists of The Voice a few years back, uh, All on You. Jeff Bradley, uh, and it's called You Call, You Only Call When You Want Something. Like I said, this, this music is something special. Uh, uh, Lamaris Williams, which he did a song called Back of My Impala, uh, Rumors. Chuck Strong, again, this this music is just that new. Um, Rock That Man in the Boat. It's a remix of a song that he did a few years ago, which was one of his big hits. Um, Keisha and Omar Cunningham doing uh, Really, Really Love You. Um, of course, there again, Omar Cunningham. Uh, and uh, an artist that I don't remember his. I don't remember hearing his voice, but his name sounds familiar. Uh, Will Gatlin with Jody. Now Jody is a. Uh, we will, you know, kind of you'll kind of hear Jody in a lot of different music uh, that is Southern Soul. Jody is the other man. Uh, we'll dumb it down for some folks. Jody is the other man. Um, you everybody. I hope everybody knows some of these terms. Candy liquor is. Um. We're going to keep that for another story as well. Um, but a lot of the music, like I said, it is provocative. It is dirty to a degree. Uh, that's why they call it grown folks music. Because a lot of the, if you're in your early 20s, you're fine listening to it. But your teens, no. No. No, 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 no. no. That's what you don't need to do. But it is allowed because if your mother played it or your grandmother played it, you're going to hear it. Sooner or later. Um, so, uh, and now we're, we're going to head to the top 20. Uh, thanks again to Mr. Tyrone Davis and the uh, top 20 countdown for giving us this uh, information to share with you guys. Uh, like I said, I'm going to try to do it every episode if we can. If we can't, you can go out and get it. It's something that it's not like it's privy information. Um, we'll, we'll start from 20 and work our way up. Number 20 is... Magic One with mine. Magic One, uh, he is a artist that he started out with TK Soul. Uh, I believe they are still kind of hanging on to each other. Um, Jeter Jones, the king of trail. Uh, let me say it right. The king of trail riding blues. Um, Jeter Jones with no poking. Then there again. Uh, king George with his over. Uh, that's a brand new single he just released. I think about maybe three or four weeks ago uh he is keep on rolling he is uh friday night he is leaving um little weight um all those to me i think he was supposed to me i tell people this all the time king george i think he was supposed to be out pre-covid before covid i don't know what happened i don't know whether he didn't have his ducks in a row but when we were on lockdown and there was a shutdown uh, and TikTok came up and came out, his name flew off the charts. Um, his producer is, if you hear of Kang803, that's his producer, uh, producer, songwriter. Great, they're a great team. Um, shouts out to King George and all of his his folks. They, they've been doing a great job. Um, anyway, uh, Andre Lee. Good to see Andre Lee again with new music. Um, Your Love Has Captured Me. Great song. I'm, I'm sure it's a great song. I haven't received it personally yet. 
that's another thing as a Southern Soul insider with a with radio stations and internet radio. I do receive music, um, and we'll try to stick some in for you. It's, like I said, this podcasts are tough to play music on because of copyright concerns and infringement and all of those things. So, and they will literally mute your whole podcast because of one little song. So, I'm gonna try to play some of it if. If you want to hear more, like I said, the station's there. It's available. It's running as we speak. Um, so, let's see. Where were we? Um, J1 with Why Not. J1, there again, is one of the biggest um, artists right now in Southern Soul. He's one of the big ones. Uh, J Lake, J1, and Magic One doing Got an Old Man. Uh, and then we've got at number 14, well, at number 15, uh, is um, well, yeah. At number uh, I'm sorry. At number fourteen, Stevie J, with Real Love. At number thirteen, um, Vic Allen, with Make It Rain. Um, remember I told you that there was there's a great um, meshing of R and B and gospel. He's a perfect example. Uh, great artist. Uh, great instrumentalist, great producer, songwriter. He was a. He played keys for the Kent, the 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 famous Canton Spirituals for years. Uh, still best friends with them, is from my understanding. Um, but he is a perfect example of gospel moving to Southern Soul. Now that's a career choice. I tell people all the time, it's a career choice. It has nothing to do with. Um, anything else but two things career and money you make a little bit more money doing southern soul versus gospel but gospel has a little bit more restraint on it you you know you can't sing about holes in the hole in the walls girls twerking or uh drinking alcohol with gospel but uh anyway gospel artist shouts out to vic allen one of our day ones over at the station uh artist 12 till with sugar uh, Yvette Bigsby was stop at number 11 uh, number 10 Mr. Sam don't let the sun go down um, number 9 Leroy Allen uh, forgot to remember he is one of the another one of those artists that just cranks out good music Betty Padgett uh, been in the business for decades 32nd you read into that uh, T.K. Soul and the Don. I, you you heard me talk about T.K. Soul. T.K. Soul is one of the opposite artists. He is one of those artists that he started out in R&B, doing a lot of R&B work. He did a lot of guitar work f for a lot of R&B artists, and he went to doing Southern Soul. Uh, wrote and produced for Willie Clayton. Vic Allen wrote and produced for Willie Clayton. Omar Cunningham. Wrote and produced for the likes of Willie Clayton, Mel Waiters. Um, I think he did some stuff with. I think he did some. He did some stuff with. Uh, I believe with uh, Denise LaSalle as well. Um, uh, Al Lindsay. Uh, shouts out to Mr. Al. Uh, some way. Uh, he, here's one for you. Uh, the Force MDs, Tender Love, uh, R&B hit. They are now singing Southern Soul. They are doing a song called I'm Gonna Tell at number five on the uh, countdown. Uh, Al, Al Caprizi, I guess is what you say. Uh, he is one of the, uh, one of those artists that is floating between rap and Southern Soul. He did uh, Vice Grip. Read into that song as well. Uh, number At number three right now um, on the, on the, countdown uh soul blues countdown roy anthony doing good thing roy anthony there's another genre of music that has just come out that came out of southern soul it was there all the time swing music it, it's literally for swing dancing um there again just something it's something about that pot that pot sits on that stove and people throw stuff in it they throw stuff in it and you get swing music you get zydeco you get gospel r&b you know you get the the hip-hop side of southern soul um right now number two real real woman uh jason a 
Uh, shouts out to Jason A. Great artist. You need to go listen to her as well. And the number one song on the countdown, Soul Blues Countdown by Tyrone Davis, uh, is Cupid, Swing Out Like Me. Cupid. Uh, the, the the name says it all. Uh, this is the Cupid that did the Cupid Shuffle and did Flex and the Cookout Slide and all of these great slide songs. Uh, line, let me correct myself line dance songs uh he is the line dance king he calls himself that king which I, I can give him that connotation i can give him that title uh the line dance king with the cupid shuffle alone which it is gone leaps and bounds uh platinum um but he's still doing he's still doing music um but if you know it or not if you listen to it real close that is technically a Zydeco song. I don't think. I think some folks understand that, but they don't. Excuse me. So, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you got to realize and understand that that's what it is. But anyway, um, that is the top 20 countdown. Uh, you can go to Facebook and look up Tyrone Davis on Facebook. Um, and you'll be able to, uh, hear that. You'll be able to see that countdown. Also that music that's listed there, like I said, Apple music, Amazon, wherever you get your favorite streaming services from, you can get the music there. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this and say this with all sincerity, this journey that we're about to partake in I believe is my journey I'm going back to a place where it all started and resurrect something that I haven't touched in probably the last podcast that I did on this was in And it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a, a new one. It was an old one that I I recycled. The last date was 2013. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say this to say all this. Join me. Um. I I want this to be something that is my stories, but I also want it to be something that you guys can enjoy. Um, like I said, we're going to try to stick some music in. I can't guarantee it simply because of the fact that, you know, copyright restraints and, you know, you get strikes and all this stuff on there. But I can also say this, uh, that we will, we will have some good things on here. There's no question about that. Uh, but before we go, um, before we leave, uh, I want to say something about, I told you at the bega- back at the beginning of the podcast, uh, I'm the co-owner of WUNK Southern Soul Radio. Um, there is another owner. Um, her name is, and I know she's probably in heaven right now, um, fussing at me to say this her name was DJ Unique Um, she passed away in 2021 if you look at WUNK her name is there Um, the story of our station and I'll give you a quick story a quick backstory Um, back in 2011 best friend she's my god sister um in 2011 we were doing two separate shows um she was doing a show called um music and more with dj unique and i was doing this particular show that we're resurrecting called the mr southern soul radio show and we wanted an opportunity to be able to do live radio all the time every day no questions asked so we sat down and thought about it we said what can we do 
So we said, well, let's hop on the internet. And at that time, we had some, we were networking with some contacts. Um, young man by the name of Brett. Um, and there was a service called Radio Loyalty. You guys may have heard of it. It's a defunct internet platform uh, that they got bought out by somebody or something. But we that was our start. Um, DJ Unique was an integral part of uh, the uh, an integral part of Southern Soul. People, very few people remember her. Uh, very talented, very well spoken young lady. She was my partner in crime. She was also uh, my god sister. But I owe all of this to her. Um, she had a vision. I had a vision, and we went with that vision and almost 12 years later um no 13 years later uh august of this year we would have we would have been we would be 13 years broadcasting um on the internet she uh we had that vision but in 2021 she did pass away um and if you hear me call her name or if you hear me talk about her, I'm talking about DJ Unique, the one and only. Uh, she was a mixing and mastering engineer, um, entertainment business graduate. Uh, she was a CEO um, and she was she was a arranger, producer, writer, composer. She did it all. Um, and. You know, we can't say it was cut short. All we can say is that she's gone home. She's gone to a better place. But anyway, uh, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you that listen, that download, that may stream the podcast. We're going to take this journey together. Uh, there'll be a lot of different topics and episodes and things like that. Um, we're going to try to do it weekly. Uh, the uploads will happen immediately after the broadcast is over. Um, no questions asked. Uh, it will be raw. It will be uncut, unfiltered, unmixed. You're going to get the 100% uncut of DJ Smooth D uh, and the Mr. Southern Soul Radio so, Show. So I want to say again, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this has been the Mr. Southern Soul Radio Show, Mr. Southern Soul Blue Show. Uh, get us where your favorite podcasts are platformed. And as I close, I always tell people, I never ever say goodbye. I always say, see you later. Have a great day. Take care. And always remember, the blues loves you.